Hello, so welcome to a new season of Japan Business Time, a Reiwa edition. Yes, exactly. And uh, we've got lots of great topics for you this season. Uh, we hope you enjoy them. So uh, to kick off, uh, I'm going to be asking uh, Rochelle about the topic she knows a lot about, about the startup scene between in Tokyo and Silicon Valley and right. the differences. So, uh, Rochelle. We got this question from Quint Rankin uh, asking, like, what, what, what are the characteristics and the differences between the Silicon Valley startup scene and the startup scene in Tokyo? And honestly, I don't even know very much about the Japan startup scene. So, as someone who moves between both of these, like, what's your perception of well, the differences? Well, it's interesting because I think I would answer this question differently now than I would have five or ten years ago. Okay. I feel like the startup scene in Japan has really been blossoming. Mm -hmm. and so, it's really exciting to see. So, how, so it's kind of underground, isn't it? I mean, compared mm -hmm. to America, where every, all these famous startups, what is the startup scene in Japan like? Even for me, it's not easy to tell. Well, well I mean, there are really startups that are doing interesting things. And of course, Mary Kari is, is a really interesting one, right? Mary Kari, yeah. Yes, and so they've um, they've you know gotten lots of funding and been you know been um, you know expanding outside of Japan, and they're pretty big. You know, in their space, they're a pretty big you know player, right? So is it the same like America where you have these like angel investors and VC funds and people running around for that or is it like big companies investing? Or well, it's a combination. Work? You know, there are a lot fewer angel investors and there's fewer VCs than there mm. are in the U.S. And the VCs here, they don't make as big or splashy investments. Mm. So there is a really big corporate venture capital scene where companies are investing. Yeah. And, you know, there's pluses and minuses to that, but um, that's you know, one, one way it happens. So, like, you're a 21 year old with a great idea for an app and some programming skills, and you want to launch your startup, startup and get funded. Right. Uh, in America, people go to Silicon Valley and go to parties and meet angel right. investors. What do people do in Japan to get their startups going? Well, you know, there isn't you know a place like Silicon Valley to go, but right. there are networking things, and there's more of of kind of groups, and there's more people who have done it. So there's starting to be those things here. Yeah. I mean, some people will get bank investment. Mm -hmm. I've even heard rumors that some people get money from the Yakuza, which is not really the best idea. <laughs> right? If that's true, don't do that. Trust exactly. Me. No, no, exactly. Don't want to be doing that. But, uh, um, you know, yeah. but it's, it's been an issue, right? Yeah. And then there's also a lot of bootstrapping, too, of course. So, like, what is the difference that you see? Uh, moving, moving between the two cultures, do you think someone who's been successful doing startups in Japan isn't going to be able to be as successful in Silicon Valley or vice versa? What would be the challenge of someone crossing the uh, Pacific? Well, I see a lot of Japanese coming to Silicon Valley trying to be successful there. And there are some stories of people who've done really well. There's um, this one startup called Fond, mm -hmm. um, Otomo Akiyama, um, I believe his name is. Mm -hmm. and, and he came over and he, he and his um, co-founders were sleeping in a van in, in a parking lot of a fast food restaurant you know, while they were wow. trying to get things going. Yeah. But they've, they've done really well and they've got lots of funding and it's, it's kind of off to a great start. So there's, there's stories like that of people who've been really successful, yeah. you know, kind of coming over. I think the problem Problems for Japanese, which is really for any mm. foreign founders, and we have lots of them, you know, coming to Silicon Valley from all over the world, yeah. is Silicon Valley is a very insular place. And if you don't know the right people, yeah. it's very hard to get, you know, connected. And so I think that's the problem that a lot of people have coming over. So how, how does a Japanese or just a non-American then mm. break into that scene? I always have this image that like Silicon Valley is full of uh, angel investors looking for the next opportunity and right, it's right. like this big dating club of VCs and nerds, but it, that's it, not it how kinda, it is. It kind of is, but the thing is you have to get introduced by the right person to even be perceived to be in that pool. I see. I mean, there's a couple um, seed funds or kind of accelerators that are aimed at foreign founders, yeah. so that's helpful. Um, you know, a lot of people go that route. Right. Um, there's also just kind of showing up at the places where you think people are going to be. So, you know, the, yeah. there's the MIT has a, has a um, speaker series and people go to that. Or you know, there's various different industry events. So a lot of people just kind of show up and do a lot of glad handing, hoping to meet people. Yeah. Which is harder to do if you're not a native speaker of English, right? Certainly. Yeah, and, and the need to be very gregarious and networking and all that sort of thing as well. Right, right, exactly. I have conducted seminars for Japanese coming to Silicon Valley on how to do small talk. <laughs> right, I and would how actually, to do I networking. Like that. Yes. <laughs> well, you you might come easier to you, but yeah. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> well, okay. Well, the flip it around then. Say I'm a I'm an American uh, manga enthusiast, app developer who's got this great idea for a manga translation app. 
Oh. So, and they want to come over to Japan and fulfill their dream of launching their, their app in Japan and uh, selling it to people, to different companies here. Like, right. w where would an American or anyone from anywhere anyone outside start. of Japan start coming to Japan mm. trying to do the inverse of You that? know, I haven't really heard a lot of stories of people coming from abroad to Japan to start things. Right. The one example that kind of comes to mind is, have you heard of Code Chrysalis? No. They are a Silicon Valley style coding boot camp. Okay. And they start up in so um, here in, in, in Japan. Mm. And so um, one of the two founders, you know, had lived in Japan yeah. and you know spoke Japanese and was, was into it. But they kind of uprooted themselves from the US and came here to start it. So wow. that's one example I know of, of and they've been doing really well. Okay. So Well the other example would be, okay, someone is successful establishing a startup in the US and they want to expand to Japan as their right. next step. Okay, I see a lot of those. I, I yeah. hear a lot of those in the Silicon Valley. We're starting an office in Japan, you know, we're, we're, we're coming over and you, you'll see a lot of, you know, the Silicon Valley companies come over here and do that. You know, Slack was a recent one that came into Japan, right? Right. right. And so for those firms, they have to really set up an operation here. Yep. So they have to find a local team that's going to be effective. And now there are more Japanese who kind of have experience working in those kind of environments. And so there's kind of a, a talent pool of those people about, you know, around now. Yeah. But you have to get a really good local team. Yeah. So what do you think would be the... So what, what are the challenges that you see? What are the difficulties? Like what's, what's an example of a successful case? Like you said Slack. And I don't know how successful mm -hmm. they are in Japan. You know, I don't know how successful they are either. I know they're here. Yeah. But I, I haven't seen numbers to, to say how, how their penetration has been. Yeah. Um, but just even as an example with Slack, you know, mm -hmm. I've heard a lot of things from Japanese that you know the way people use technology like that is different in different cultures right and so there's a lot of issues of people in japan mm. um there, there's a lot of kind of cover your ass behavior in yeah. japanese organizations and yes. so people will use slack for that and just put like way too much stuff on it so that there's a record oh, i see and so there's a that's a particularly japanese issue that comes up with slack yeah right and so then which turns a lot of people off to it right right so so there's issues like that that how is your technology going to work in this context? It might not be the same way it is at home, right? Yeah. Another issue I can imagine and that I think I've also seen and heard of is the fact that even for very mature companies, for very big, well-established companies, to go to a country like Japan and uh, be able to tell who are the good hires and who are the bad hires and how to manage people from a different culture, even for companies that you expect would have some ability to do that, they struggle let alone a bootstrapped company run by a, a 23 year old. Uh, it makes it more records. tricky, exactly. It makes it more tricky, right? Yeah. It's, it's not easy in any circumstance, right? Yeah. yeah. And so that's where, you know, for a lot of those startups are coming over, they need to find really good consultants here. Yeah. And they need to have a good headhunter to help them find the right staff. Right. Yeah. And, and, and to avoid that trap that so many people fall into of thinking someone is a good hire because they speak English well. That's very. That's a. That is a very big trap. Uh, yes, a common one. Yeah, and and all the other pitfalls of um, just sort of assuming you can start the company. I mean, people do start companies in hotel rooms actually quite often, but um, <laughs> but yeah, you realizing tax is different, labor laws different, right, right. and don't just expect to be able to walk in and set up or maybe do that on a couple of the exploratory visits, but um, right. yeah, you really should get probably some good advice when you're setting you up. You have to have good advice, you have to have the right team, and also you have to realize that things won't necessarily work here right. that the way they would in another country. So for example, I have one client that was a Silicon Valley company, mm -hmm. that they were starting up here, and they need to do all their things to get their, yeah. their HR infrastructure set up. Yeah. And so their thought was, based on what you would do in the U.S., is, well, this is something that you outsource. Yeah. And so they came to me and said, okay, we need a Japanese HR external consultant to set this up. Right. And I talked to Japanese who, you know, HR consultants who I know, and they're all like, what? They want what? Yeah. And, and also, part of it was they want it when, because they wanted it really quickly. And basically talking to them, what found out it was something that is not outsourced. And then yeah. in Japan, that you have an employee who does that. Yeah. And so I counseled my client, you really just need to hire someone. Yeah. That, that none of the consultants out there are really going to do that. Yeah. Yeah. There's all sorts of directions. And I think we're going to do some more topics on startups uh, in the series. Right. Um, there's all sorts of angles. There's the angles about uh, actually setting up the entity, about managing people, about going to a different company. And then there's the thing about how the startups themselves perform. I mean, the difficulties that even Facebook had in Japan for a long time right. and so on. Right, right. Um, 
all sorts of topics, and we're going to be covering more of these in the season. I mean, it's Rewa, so of course we're of talking course. about startups and high tech. And new things, exactly. And yes. new stuff. So uh, hang around, there'll be more episodes of Japan Business Time Rewa yes, edition okay. coming up. And uh, see, see you next time. Okay.